Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight and we thank you and praise you for giving us this time. You are a good, good God. You are. And you are a good, good Father. And I thank you. Today is my birthday. And Lord, I thank you for giving me life. And then, Lord, for enabling me to be born again, for breathing into me again. And I thank you and I praise you for that. And then, Lord, for just coming with your spirit to empower me and just give me new, new fervency and new life to go forward and that to which you've called me. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you. I am so abundantly blessed, and I thank you. Lord, I ask you to please anoint me one more time. Please let the mantle of teacher rest on me and enable me to be accurate and clear and plain with what it is that you've put on my heart for tonight. Just, Lord, I, I have been blessed and encouraged just by preparing this, and I ask you that you will do the same for others as they believe and receive that it is for them as well. And we'll give you glory and honor and praise for it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen and amen. Well, um, those of you who've been attending know that what I ha have just felt that I was to do in these days was that I was to go back to the postings that the Lord had me doing a year ago when we were unable to meet together and I was doing online teachings, Kelly was recording it in our home and then we were posting it at the times when we normally would be having class. So I haven't done those in order. I have just been praying about it and um, going back to reflect on what it was that was happening in our lives, what it was that God was saying to us then, and what it is that God is saying to us now as we continue to go forward. And um, so this is the one that is really on my heart for tonight. And uh, the title is Dream On. Dream on, exclamation point, dream on. So let me just remind you, you've heard it in this room, you hear it often, you hear it as I'm speaking, as we encourage one another, God is a good God. Even when times are tough, even when what we're, when we're facing is really challenging and we don't understand it, God is a good God. And I want to say this to you, no matter what your challenges are right now, no matter what your hurts might be, he is for you. He is for you. He loves you and he is for you. Just remember and write this down, the forces, the angelic forces, the forces fighting for you are greater than those fighting against you. The forces fighting for you are greater than the ones fighting against you. And you know what? If we can keep our focus on that, when times are really tough, and when we, I mean, how many of you would say in this last week that, that you just felt in certain one area or another that like, <laughs> like the enemy's forces were really coming against you in a hard way. Just be honest, be honest. Not every hand is up in here, but many hands are up in here. Take this to your heart. The forces fighting for you are greater than those fighting against you. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. I wrote this a year ago. I can say it still exactly the same way. These times are unusual. They are uncommon. They are unfamiliar. And they are uncomfortable. Right? We are still in a time when things are unusual, uncommon, unfamiliar. And because of all that, they're uncomfortable for us. 
I mean, we are continually navigating, you know, we're having our meetings today, talking about the Easter services coming, and how can we do this to allow people to come and yet be socially distanced? You know, what, what, what protocol do we need to follow? What services? How do we need to set things up? for the meetings that will be in here on Good Friday and the, those that will be in the sanctuary all through the weekend, just trusting God to lead us. So unusual, uncommon, unfamiliar, and uncomfortable. But the truth of it is, we are not always brought out of difficulties or brought through difficulties the most comfortable way. Isn't that the truth? I mean, we want to be comfortable. <laughs> but the truth of it is, God views comfort in a different way. And what is our theme scripture for all of Help for Hurting Women and for any ministry to those who are hurting? 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Our theme scripture. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, any trouble. Why? So that we can give that same comfort to others that we've received from God, right? Uh, Donna was saying that she did a, a, a devotional and that ended with go give somebody some comfort that you've received yourself, right? But it, this is such a powerful scripture because we understand that Jesus Christ is the father of compassion, which means feeling something so strongly that something has to be done. It's not just a feeling, but it's, a, it's an urgency to do something. That's what compassion is after Jesus. That's why they had to make up a new word it, it, that is translated compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. So we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. But the truth of it is, the comfort that he brings to us is not always comfortable. Are you with me? It is just not always comfortable, okay? Um. <laughs> It, the truth is that he ha does not immediately deliver us from all the difficulties that we are facing and even all the hurts that we are going through. We are not immediately delivered from them, nor are we promised that even though he'll bring comfort, that it will be comfortable in the process. How many of you would say to you in this last year of covid that you have found yourself over and over and over again in uncomfortable situations. I mean, I think every hand in here would be up. And yet, I can ask those of you who are part of the ministry, attending regularly, or you're really Christ followers, how many of you found that even in the midst of being uncomfortable, that you received comfort from God? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. In these times, um, I, I, I wrote a year ago, in these times I've looked into various writers and devotionals, and I was doing that in those closed-in times last year, but I was also thinking so much about dreams because so many dreams that people had just seemed to be put absolutely on hold. The dreams of going to church, the dreams of being with family, grandparents being able to be with their grandchildren, the dreams of travel. Some, I know so many people who had their dream trips absolutely completely put on hold or completely canceled, completely canceled. Just dreams which seem to be put on hold. I, I'm just going to ask it straight out because my hand will go up. How many of you would say, now here's a dream. 
Here's the definition of a dream. A cherished aspiration, an ambition, or an ideal. Okay, cherished aspiration, an ambition, something that you're dreaming of doing or you were dreaming of doing. How many of you felt in this last year that you had a dream that was put on hold? Lots and lots of hands in here, lots of hands. So you understand exactly what I'm saying. Now, just the title itself, Dream On, Okay, so tell me, be honest, what's it make you think of? What, Kelly? The song. Okay, how many of you, it makes you think of the song by Aerosmith, Dream On? This is all? Let me see your hands. Okay, Dream On, Dream On, yeah. I mean, you just, if you've ever heard it, okay, and it, and it was in the 70s when they were so incredibly famous, but this song, the popularity of this song has never waned. I mean, it's never waned. So it's embedded in a lot of people's minds. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, really, dream on, because there, there's a line in there that says, dream until the dream comes true. Dream until your dream comes true. There's nothing wrong with that line in that song, that hard rock song. Listen to this line. And this is what always amazes me. These artists who so lost their way through drugs and alcohol and addiction and lifestyle, so lost their ways. Listen to this stanza. Sing with me. Sing for a year. Sing for the laughter and sing the tear. Sing with me if it's just for today. Maybe tomorrow the good Lord will take you away. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that this, this line is in this song. The good Lord. Yeah. Dream on. Sing. You know... All of these artists are gifted, you know that. And you know the gifting has come from God. The gifting has come from God. And um, there are quite a few of these, I checked today, who are still alive. So if this song starts coming to you in this next week, pray for them. Amen? Pray for them while there is yet time. While there's yet time. So what I want to say is... Um, the, the power of dreams is there in the scripture powerfully from, from beginning to end. One that we're fairly familiar with is if you know Joseph's life at all, Joseph's life at all, the dreams that Joseph had were powerful. They were powerful dreams but it took 23 years for the fulfillment of those dreams. 10 chapters in Genesis are given to the story of Joseph's life. And the bottom line uh, is it was a grueling process to go from the God-given dreams that were absolutely given by God to the fulfillment of those dreams, which was completely amazing but the process in the meantime was grueling. But when you come to Joseph's life and you read what he knows God is telling him and what he sees is he says so straightforwardly, God meant it all for good. He meant it all for good. Everything involved in the process, the grueling process of the waiting, of the, of the having to hold on, of the unfolding of it, God meant it all for good. And there was a definite, I use this phrase over and over again in here, there was a definite purpose in the process. Write that down. God always has a purpose in the process the process. If God waved a wand and fixed everything, what we would learn is God is awesome. That's what we would learn. 
That's it. God's awesome and he can do anything he wants, right? Whenever he wants. But as God takes us through, if God waved a wand, okay, and it was suddenly fixed, what would we learn? God's awesome. That's what we would learn. But we would learn nothing about his character, right? We wouldn't come to know him in any deeper way. There is always a purpose in the process. Now, one of the devotions that touched me so deeply, and this is just a portion of a devotion, was written by J. Ashley Jensen. I have no idea who that is. But this is called The Process of a Dream. <laughs> Say it out loud right now. Trust the process. Trust the process. Trusting the process is one of the most grueling parts of living your dream. It breaks us down just to build us back up again. Anything that has significance, anything that has significance has gone through a process. There's a power in the process of God when we are obedient to God in our dream. The awesome thing about our dream is that we get to participate in the process and move forward with Holy Spirit in reaching our God-given dream. So we're not just spectators, we're participators, amen? Most processes have different phases, and each phase has a different purpose. The phases are there for a reason. God doesn't ever skip a phase to save us from the lesson that he'd like us to learn. Oh, shuckies. <laughs> yeah, God doesn't ever skip a phase to save us from the lesson he'd like to teach us. The process is by no means to punish us. We have to get away from this punitive religious way of thinking about God. If God allows something in our lives, then it is up to us to take authority in the spirit of God and walk through it and learn the lesson being taught. The lessons are always birthed out of love. If we aren't being corrected somewhere along the way, then I dare to say that maybe we aren't fully walking in the love of God. I know it sounds like a harsh statement, but correction for God, from God, comes from the love of God. Now, honestly, honestly, think back over the last year. Haven't you learned a lot of things? A lot of things about God? A lot of things about yourself? Right? Haven't you? I have learned. I, I've probably learned more in the last year than I learned in the last 10 years before that all put together. Honestly, truly. When we trust the process of God, we are trusting the God of the process. Write that down. When we trust the process of God, we are trusting the God of of the process. When our time here on earth is gone, we all must answer the question, did I fulfill God's call on my life? Fulfilling our call is something that we're responsible for. All of us are called to different things and maybe even called to it for different seasons as well. As a Christian, we're all given a God-given dream for our lives that only we can fulfill. So let me pause here and say, if you don't have a dream, if you don't have a God-given dream of what it is that God wants to do with your life, it's time to ask for it. It's time to ask for it. And those of you who came in here deeply hurting, truly hurting, and you're in that process, having that dream will help you work the process. It will help you trust the process and trust the God of the process. Disappointment is the gap that exists between expectation and reality. <laughs> we start expecting when we dream out there, down there, somewhere, 
is the reality, and in between, we face disappointment over and over and over again. It's amazing. Frustration is when your expectation and your experience are opposite. They're polarized. You're expecting something, and what you're actually experiencing is the opposite, exactly the opposite of that, and that leads to abject frustration. Have any of you ever been there? You got a clue when I'm, wave at me. If you got a clue what I'm talking about? Yeah. Frustration is when your expectation and your experience are polarized. At some point along the way, we must break free from the disappointment, from the frustration, and whatever else is holding us back, and just keep at our dream. In other words, I would say, dream on. God's dream for us will come through the process of discovering who we are in Christ. What? God's dream for us will come through the process of discovering who we are in Christ. That's his dream for us. He wants us to know him. He wants, who we, he wants us to know who we are in him. He does not want us, Linda, to be having an identity crisis. Through the delays of God, we can see the love of God. Through the delays of God, we can see the love of God. You may feel that God's dream for your life is delayed, undiscovered, or even derailed, but don't lose hope. Jesus is in the resurrection business, and he can dream your, bring your dream back from the dead. God knows what you need as a good father, and he has planned your days long before your feet hit this earth. Wow. Okay. So, personal. Personal transparency. First time I spoke to you about this was in May of 2020. May of 2020. And I had a dream that was delayed, derailed, frustrated, disappointed, every one of these adjectives that you want to use to describe it. And it was my deep desire to lead a trip to Israel. And year by year, the possibility would present itself that I possibly could do this starting in 2011. I think this is 2021. Yeah. Every year that the possibility looked like it was coming, and then again it was not possible, I was losing hope. Year by year by year. Disappointment, frustration, feeling derailed. And I'm going to use a word here, but I want you to understand it. And then suddenly, suddenly, at the end of January 2021, my dream had new life. And then what happened? Hope was restored. And then what happened? The trip was scheduled for April of 2023. Now I'm saying suddenly, because all that happened from the end of January to the 1st of March, six weeks, suddenly. Was it a suddenly? You tell me, was it a I'd been waiting for how many years? 10 years. And in that process of the 10 years, I got to tell you, there were times when um, it was not pretty. I'm just going to be honest with you. It was not pretty. I was disheartened. I was disappointed. I was questioning God. Did you really, did you really put this dream in my heart? Did you really do this? 
Jeremiah 29, 11, for many of you, it's a life verse. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you. In other words, God's saying, I know the dreams that I have for you. <laughs> plans to give you what? Hope and a future. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Let me tell you, I was hurting, but I was not harmed. Do you understand? I was hurting, but I was not harmed. And in the disappointments and the delays and even feeling derailment or confusion all the time, all the time, God was doing something in me. All the time. I don't know what all he was doing, but I know God was doing something in me all that time. Are you with me? Okay. God knows the plans he has for us, and they often come to us in dreams. Sometimes they're night dreams. Sometimes. More often, I think they're daydreams, right? Daydreams. We're, we're praying. We're, we're thinking. We're considering. We're, you know, we watched it happen in my mother, right, at retreat, right? We watched it happen. She's at retreat. She's 94 years old, right? You know, spent the last year and a half lamenting, how did I get here? This is horrible, and this is not what I expected my life to be. And all of a sudden, she's at retreat, and she has a God-given daydream, right? A God-given daydream to go and work the Godmobile at the Lee County Fair. I mean, yeah, and she did it twice. And God provided everything needed to get her there, to care for her while she was there. She, it, was, it was invigorating to her. I guess he fulfilled it so fast because she's 94. <laughs> God knows the plans he has for you, the dreams he has for you. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Familiar scripture. I share it with you over and over again. Paul is writing to the church, to us. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Offer yourselves. Don't conform to the pattern of this world. The people who say, give up, it's over, it's not possible. This is just wishful thinking, okay? Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that? The word of God. The word of God. The word of God in prayer. Is that all I got? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. And it works. Amen? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His dreams for you. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Can you say amen? Amen. Give yourself to God. Renew your mind through the word, and the transformation process will continue, and there's a purpose in the process. Trust the process. Trust the God of the process. Amen? Philippians 1, 6, and 7, I quote it to you all the time. Being confident of this, Philippians 1, 6, and 7. That he who began a good work in you, and those dreams coming, those daydreams coming, the night dreams coming, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen? It ain't over till it's over, and if you're still breathing, it ain't over. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I'm saying... Dream on. <laughs> you, know the, the, you know the phrase, game on. I mean, uh, when, when the game is on, you got to be in it to win it. Amen? You have to be in it to win it. Dream on. And let God be the God of the process. Trust him. But listen, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. This time, one year ago, my dream was on life support, if I can put it that way. My dream was on life support. 
because I really wasn't holding on to it much anymore at all. And it was Kelly who continued to breathe the life of God into me and into my dream. My spiritual daughter saying to me, Pastor, don't let go. Don't let go of your dream. Just don't let go of your dream. I know it looks rough and getting rougher. I know it looks bad and getting badder, not a word, okay? <laughs> but she would say, I know. I know this hurts. I know it's hard. But don't let go of your dream. And praise God, she kept, she, she kept me on life support. She kept breathing life, speaking life into my dream, truly. She didn't know. She didn't know that in less than a year, that was, I mean, it was really bad by May. She didn't know in less than a year that there would be a suddenly that would happen and doors would open and walls would fall and the ability would be there, not just the ability, but the wide open possibility to just go forward with my dream. Amen? Amen. <laughs> to lead a trip to Israel. So what am I saying to you? Dream on. Dream on. The enemy's going to try to do whatever he can. It, you know, if you let go of your dream, is it going to be the end of the world? No. You're still going to make it to heaven? Yes. You know? But, but to arrive there, I believe, seeing what you could have done, what God had planned, if you had just not given up. And when we're hurting, when things are uncommon, uncomfortable, unfamiliar, just strange, and it just keeps going on and on, the enemy will just come to divide us, to separate us, to attempt to keep us alone and lonely, and just little by little, whittle by whittle, whittle away at the dream. And my heart is for you. My heart for you is that you just will not let him do it. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. And you may need somebody. Your dream may be on life support. There's a wonderful ministry team in here. And when we close, you can just remain seated at your table. For those of you watching, listening, contact us. We'll speak life into your dream. We'll pray life into your dream. You may just need somebody to encourage you to say, dream on. Today is not the day for letting go. And may, you may have let go long ago, but now you're sitting here realizing that that dream is still stirring inside of you. If you would just bow your heads. There's no question whatsoever that God's dream for you starts with that you would know him, that you would accept him, and that he would have the opportunity to live his life in you. His dream that you would make your heart a Bethlehem, that his life would be birthed in you and you would indeed be born again. That's his dream. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus gave his life, because he was dreaming of your life. And if you have never accepted Jesus in that way, let tonight be your night. Or maybe, like me, you did it, and along the way you lost your way, and you know it's time to just recommit your life to him. If either one of those is you, would you just raise your hand so I can pray for you? I do not see hands in this room. If you are watching or listening and that is you, 
Now is your opportunity to just say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that your dream was to come and live a sinless life and die for me, and die for me, that my sin might be forgiven, and now you're alive. I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior. I make you Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive me for every way I failed you, and ask you to help me because now I'm yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name. Now let me ask you, if you would say to me, Pastor Connie, there are dreams in me unyet fulfilled, and I want to be empowered to dream on. If that's you, just stand. Just stand. And I would imagine nearly everybody in here is going to be standing. And wherever, wherever you're listening, or it, it, just, just stand. Just stand. Um, if you're able, lift your hands to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you see these beautiful women in this room. You see these hands lifted to you. The, the, the dream designer, the one who just gives us the dreams in the night and in the day because it's all part of our divine destiny, all part of our divine destiny. God, for those who are watching or listening, God, I just ask you that not only will hands be lifted, but hearts will be lifted and hearts will be open. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against everything that the enemy has used to just distract and disappoint and distress. And for every dis disappointment, God, I ask you to make a reappointment in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will be reappointed to their dreams. Father, I ask you that you will begin to give them visions and thoughts about this and renewed hope and renewed expectation in a way that only you are able to do this. God, I am so thankful for what you did for me. And I just know that I know that I'm, I'm talking to people right now. Lord, I'm praying for them right now. And their dreams are on life support, just like my was. And I ask you, God, that you will bring someone to them the same way that Kelly kept speaking in my life, saying, don't let go, don't give up. God is still working. Lord, I can say it in this room, but I ask you, God, to bring to them those who will be those who will just continue to bring life and hope and expectation into their lives, just hanging on and holding on with them. Lord, I ask you to bless them and keep them and make your face shine on them and take them from this place protected with huge angels on guard round about them. And every time the enemy tries to come, that they will respond with, you've lost. I am dreaming on in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give him praise? Just give him praise. Amen. 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 Maybe it's a good thing right now. This is going to go off. If you sit down and if it's short, write down what that dream is at this moment. Write it down. Date it. Make it. Habakkuk says, you know, when we get vision, we write it down. We make it plain. And though it tarry, we wait for it. Amen. We wait. Praise God.